What's going on, YouTube? It's Laquan. The only Laquan is complexion you ever going to see. Yeah, like that. I'm making a video for you guys today. Talk about the military and, you know, mental health in the military. It's a very important subject. I feel like it's not talked about enough. Um, If you know somebody who's in the military, um, make sure you check up on your people. Make sure you stay in touch with these people because it's not always what it seems. A lot of people think that you'll join the military and you'll get from where you're from and now your life is perfect. It's not the case all the time. Um, sometimes people be going through some some very, very real things in their brain. Um, you got to think about it. These people have been taken away from where they're from to a place where they don't know nobody. More often than not, it's somebody that moved out of mama's house now they got to pay phone bills and rent and deposits. And, you know, you think that their life is made and, and they didn't went off and became successful. It's stressful. Make sure you get keep in touch with your people. Um, Just because they're out there in Japan or Louisiana, wherever they at. Life is hard, man. Make sure you keep in touch with your people. That's very important to have somebody to talk to. Um, It sucks because your worst enemy will be somebody who's wearing the same uniform as you. Um, I had a platoon sergeant when I was in Fort Hood that was toxic. He was he was a mess. When I first got to Fort Hood reception, he came and picked me up and he told me, um, I was getting ready to be an E5. I was E4 promotable, which is uh, you know, on your way to be an NCO. Um he told me that the soldiers were not squared away in the unit. Squared away means, you know, doing what you're supposed to do, looking how you're supposed to look, talking how you're supposed to talk, walk how you're supposed to walk, etc. Um, so that kind of painted a picture for me of the unit when I got down to Fort Hood Aviation, what it was going to be like. Now, my first day at the unit, I seen an E3, a PFC, tell an E6 staff sergeant to shut the up. My jaw dropped. I had never seen nothing like this. I had never seen a junior enlisted talk to an NCO like that without no repercussions. But it just kind of like, uh let me know how things was gonna be in that unit it was but wild it was crazy um anyway uh in the in the in the military we got warfighter management which means like you know i had eight soldiers i was an e5 i don't pick and choose when my soldiers work i just manage them supervise them and stuff but basically warfighter management means excuse me Warfighter management basically means like if I work you 10 days straight, I got to give you at least a day off to go home and get some rest, recuperate, stuff like that. Um, that's warfighter management. Um, one time we worked 26 days straight, 12 hour shifts, no day off. I'm not complaining. I'm just painting a picture for you guys. You know, you know how hot it is in Fort Hood. Uh, you're in the military. I was a mechanic. We work in the motor pool. 26 days straight of 12 hour shifts will wear on you. <laughs> it will wear on you. Either it's going to break you or it's going to make you tougher. One or the other. But like I said, things were already bad at this unit. Now, my platoon sergeant paid in a picture for me that these soldiers were, were bad soldiers. Um, I was there for maybe two months before I realized he was the problem. Um, This is the kind of guy that he will tell you. You guys can go home for the day. I'm just playing. Come back. No, nah, y'all can go home for real now. I'm just playing. Come back. This guy is the kind of guy that had two or three families that didn't want nothing to do with him. He ain't had nobody to go home to. I think he probably lived in an apartment. and Nobody wanted to see him. He was always at work. And when he was at work, we had to be too. This is the kind of guy that, I, you know, Friday afternoon... You know, around three, four o'clock, when you think you're going to go home for the weekend, he tells you, hey, you're working this weekend. Call your families and let them know. Now, you in the military, you active duty. You can't really complain about this because you just got to do what he says. But at the same time, it's really like, it's demoralizing, man. When you expect, you know, you've been working all week in the heat, thinking you're going to take Saturday and Sunday off to relax, hang out with your family, and they take that from you like that. And with him, it wasn't really an excuse to do it. Like, there was nothing crazy going on. Um, we were behind on services, but it was because he didn't manage it right. He had more than enough soldiers to make 
things right. And, you know, I could blame it on him or whatever, but that's besides the fact. Um, this guy played mental chess games with people, and I've seen a lot of people fall victim to him. Um, I've seen females lie and say somebody tried to rape them just to get out the unit to get away from him. It was real bad. Um, but me being optimistic, you know, I was a, a fresh E5. I was trying to, my, my hardest to make things better for the soldiers and try to be that middle guy to, you know, be there for them. Um, but I started losing my mind <laughs> after a few months. I started losing my mind. Um, this guy was Puerto Rican. I'm fluent in Spanish. I work with the Hispanics a lot. We work together. Um, he told us we couldn't speak Spanish at work. Cool. No, no problem. Now, the problem came when he started threatening me in Spanish in front of everybody. He threatened me because he knew I did not care for him. I mean, when he when he walked towards my direction, he would like purposefully walk my way. So I had to move out of his way. I'm not moving. I'm a sturdy individual. I don't know if you can look at me and tell, but I could be three foot tall. You're not going to play with me. Nobody's invincible. Um, once he kind of caught the gesture that I didn't care for him, it was on mental chess game. Um, at the end of the day, it's called close of business, COB. Everybody's done working. The NCOs go to the office and have a meeting about, uh, you know, what we got going on the next day, uh, blah, blah, blah. These guys being there talking about football and females for two, three hours. So imagine it's four or five o'clock in the afternoon. You finished your whole work day. Um, you're ready to go home, see your family. They say they're going in there to do a meeting and come out two, three hours later. Now, my personal belief is when you're in garrison, which means you stateside, you're not deployed, you should be able to spend at least an hour a day with your family. You know, you ain't got to pick the kids up from school or anything like that. You should be at home for dinner, man. I mean, we don't got nothing crazy going on. It's just this man being hateful. Like I said, he don't got nobody waiting on him. Ain't nobody waiting on this man. He got two or three families. He done did dirty. You know how some some military guys are like that, man. They they just they just screw everybody over. But anyway, back to uh back to the subject. Me and this guy play mental chess a lot. Um, I knew how to toe the line enough to where I didn't get in trouble, but I let him know that I was not in with him. You understand what I'm saying? So he would play a lot of little games like, oh, y'all good to go. Go ahead. Psych, I'm just playing. Come back. Now, this guy was overweight. I don't even feel like he like deserved to be in the military. You know what I mean? So it was just, I think he was just angry at the world and he took it out on us. He used to tell us stories about throwing tire irons at his NCOs and stuff. And I used to question him, like, why would you tell us that? Are you trying to intimidate us? Are you trying to, like, tell us to throw something at you? Because we're not going to do that. And if and if your NCO was a real NCO back then, he'd have put you out the army for that. But, you know, different times, different places, whatever. Um, appointments. If you had an appointment at 10 o'clock in the morning and you try to leave at 930 to get to this appointment on time, you leaving at 9.50, you got 10 minutes to get to your appointment. On post speed limit, if you was at ever in the, in the military anywhere, on post speed limit, always slow, 25, 35 miles per hour. Now, with that being said, if you get caught speeding, you in trouble. MPs catch you speeding, you in trouble. If you miss an appointment or come late to an appointment, you are in trouble. It was a point in time in around like 2016, 2017, you miss an appointment, you might get kicked out the army. You definitely get a UCMJ action. UCMJ action is Uniform Code of Military Justice. They could garnish your pay for 45 days. They could restrict you from leaving post for 45 days. They could take your rank from you for missing an appointment. So this is a big deal. You know, when it comes to stress and pressure, there's already enough in the military that you deal with for this guy to add on to it. So, um... He tells me and the rest of the he tells me and the Hispanic soldiers that we're not to speak Spanish at work. Now, like I said, me and him been playing mental chess. So when he does little slick stuff, I do little slick stuff too, but never to the point to where he can pin me to the wall about it and take my rank. Because I knew that's what he wanted. He wanted to make me 
suffer just like everybody else. But see, I was optimistic and I tried to be positive about things because that was my only option. Uh, I'm from the hood. I've been through a lot more than this guy. Uh, not more than he's been through, but more... I've been through worse bullies than this guy. <laughs> I used to live next to my bullies. I used to go to the same school as my bullies, ride the same bus as people who were bullying me. So this guy was nothing to me. Um, with that being said, he told me in Spanish one day, Con tu que poner la guante, tu dime. That means when you want to put the gloves on, you let me know. This is a short, fat dude. Short, fat Puerto Rican dude. Y'all can look at me and tell, like, I, I can handle myself. But see, that wasn't the way to put my hands on him because that's get, give him what he wanted. I can't do that. Um, instead, I, I try to deal with this guy and I try to like change his ways a little bit and like make him see perspective. Um, but he didn't care. He knew, but he didn't care. So um, I started to lose my mind. I was the most optimistic person, man. I just started to lose my mind, you know, um, I started fantasizing about doing things to this man. Not good things, neither. Um, I ended up going to behavioral health and talking to them about it. They asked me, why are you so frustrated? I told them what was going on. I told them, I want to whack this dude. Straight up. Now, we were getting ready to go to Syria together. So you let your mind wonder. You know, you figure that out yourself. You know, what can happen between two people who hate each other. I'm talking about hate each other i hated this man um this is somebody who's on my side somebody who wears the same uniform as me somebody who's in command of me um a lot of stuff would happen he would twist details and fib and you know omit things to to his uh to his benefit and you know because of the rank that i had and you know being in the military i had to be quiet and just go along with what he said. I couldn't really go against it unless I wanted to make things worse. So when I went to behavioral health and told them that I wanted to whack this guy, they made it a big deal, as they should. Um, they diagnosed me with personality disorder. Uh, they diagnosed me with four or five mental health issues. Um, I'm telling you guys right now, there's nothing wrong with me. I got enough sense to sit here and make this video. I, I got sense. I run my own business. I'm not a dumb person. But I'm telling you, I was I was about that close to ruining my life because of this man. Um, I don't know where he is today, and I really don't care. If anything happened to him, I would not lose no sleep. I would call it karma. Um, the reason I'm telling you guys all this, though, is because you think that somebody will join the military and become a better person, a better situation, better circumstances. Everybody think you got benefits. Everybody think you got money. Everything. Everybody think that your life is just perfect after joining the military. It's not. It's not. And one of the reasons why I did this video is because I watched some videos of ex-cons um, coming on YouTube talking about their experiences in prison. It's a lot of correlations. I mean, of course, it's big differences because, you know, one's in prison, one's in the military. But there's a lot of things that, that's in common with, with you know, the military and the correctional facilities. And I feel like we got a lot in common when it comes to, like, stress and mental issues and things like that. Um, so if you got people who's locked up, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you write your people. Make sure you stay in contact with your people. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hearing from somebody might can make them get through it and become a better person. I left the military and started my own business. I have two children, a wife. My life is great. Um, I didn't throw my life away because I used my brain. So with that being said, this is going to be a short video. I'm going to come at you guys with more videos um, about my experiences in life, not just the military, um, but I do want to talk about the military because this is misconception. Everybody thinks that that you're 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 just set for life. It's a lot of stuff that comes with the military, man. Not only do you gotta deal with the enemy, but you gotta remember this this people that's in your same uniform on your side, they're your enemy. Make sure y'all keep up with your people. Make sure y'all stay talking to them. Um 
I know too many people who committed suicide in the military. Too many. One is too many, and I know a lot. All those people have families. Every single one of them had a family. Whether they were dead or not, they came from something somewhere, and now those people aren't. They probably didn't even have no clue what they were going through. Most men suffer in silence. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people are going to go to behavioral health and tell them they want to do somebody in, like I did. You know, um, make sure you keep up with your people, man. And before you join the military, make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure that you read the, the, the fine print because I was supposed to go in as an air conditioning technician and ended up being a wheel vehicle mechanic. They just changed my job. Um, Like I said, it's Laquan, veteran, E5. I'm a window tender now. I do music. Make sure you check out my music videos on my page. Make sure you show some love. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell. Um, we'll be coming at you guys with a lot more videos. Like I said, it's Laquan. The only Laquan this complexion you ever going to see. And I'm out. Peace and love.